more we can expose data in a meaningful way and in a way that has actionable insights in it, the more value customers are getting from it. And actually, the less they really need to know about the deep, deep weeds of a particular situation, because we're getting a lot more commoditization or productization of solutions as well. So you can pretty much take an engine for any jurisdiction and you can be comfortable that that will statutorily calculate. So the ability to really know what it's doing is becoming less and less important. The, the better testing processes get, the better test rigs around infrastructure get, the less as a payroll professional you need to really understand and know about that. Um, and the more you can actually focus on the bigger picture of what's really happening across multiple use cases, across multiple geographies. So definitely, I, I would totally agree with what you're seeing in the data, that it's a shift towards a much more tech competent um, data analytical capability is becoming the norm in the payroll environment. Hello and welcome back to the Payroll Podcast. My name is Nick Day, CEO at JGA Recruitment Group, and we're specialist payroll recruiters operating now in the UK, EMEA and the US. Now, remember, if you are a usual listener to the show, please do remember to subscribe. Please do review the show if you get a moment. But most importantly, please do share it with all of your colleagues and friends that work in payroll so that together we can really raise the profile of global payroll. And in fact, I have a guest who's doing exactly that right now, because today I'm joined by someone who's been on the show before, back in June 2021. I'm joined by Richard Limpkin, who is VP of Multicultural Payroll Solutions at UKG. Now, Richard joined me previously to talk about Global Touches Payroll and RPA. And wow, hasn't the world moved on a bit since then? And yet, we're still, it's incredibly relevant. We're going to get into exactly why during the course of the show. But for those not familiar, Richard's diverse experience includes developing Oracle's first HR business intelligence layer, managing procurement for the British Armed Forces, and integrating HR solutions into unified platforms. Notably, he led Amidas in creating the first touchless global payroll and payments technology, which is something we discussed on the previous show, but we're going to touch upon it again today. Uh, and I'm really excited because Richard's expertise isn't just in the world of global payroll, it's in human capital management. And he's been pivotal in driving significant transformations and growth across multiple organizations. Today, I'm really excited because we're going to have the opportunity to explore UKG's 2023 acquisition of Amidis. Now, for those not familiar, we've had Amidis on the show before as well, and we've had a couple of UKG speakers as well. So we're going to be talking about the impact that's had on global payroll and importantly, how technology enabled payroll solutions are going to be shaping the future of global payroll and the payroll landscape for everyone listening to this show. So without further ado, Richard, welcome to the Payroll Podcast. How are you feeling today? Brilliant. Thanks so much, Nick. It's great to be back. I actually, I'm baffled by it being two and a half years. I can't believe it's that long. So No, uh... I was a bit shocked when I looked into it myself, to be honest. It feels like just a few months ago, right? And so much has moved on in such a rapid space of time. But I don't think I asked you this question. If I did, let's ask it again and see if the, uh, the narrative has changed. What does the word payroll mean to you? Oh, wow. No, we definitely didn't get asked that. Um, the payroll for me is really, really personal. So I've, I've spent my whole career in and around HR and payroll tech. Um, it's kind of where I didn't plan to be there. I was a physicist um, and I ended up in technology space. And that kind of Oracle piece around HR and HR data is what led me into payroll. Figured out pretty quickly that everything of value flows into payroll and that impacts everybody. So being in the middle of all of that was really where I wanted to be. Um, and that's kind of been, a, it's been a career long love since then. So actually being part of that, um, it's really important to me. It's been critical. It's why we, it's why we built Amidas. It's why we did what we did. Um, and it was, it was, it's really, really personal. That's probably what I'd sum it up as. It has a critical impact on everybody in every organization. And it's kind of quite unforgiving as well. The bar is really high in payroll. It's as you as you know well, Nick. If if it's wrong, like that's it, game over. It has to be right, and it has to be right first time. So it's kind of putting yourself in a place that's uncomfortable to grow. Um, it delivers a lot of that for me. So yeah, that's my kind of personal take on it. No, nah, fantastic. What uh, three three words that really stood out for me there is like critical impact and unforgiving. And I know there'll be people listening to this, I'm nodding their heads as they go through. And particularly as we raise the profile, we've really got to understand now and start to learn to understand just what the impact can be on organizational success and all the different things that go with it. 
One thing that really shocked me when it came through, and obviously you've been working at it behind the scenes, was when I suddenly got the announcement that came through into my own box to say that UKG had acquired Amidis. And we've worked with UKG SI partners. We'd obviously done some direct work with, uh, with Amidis as, as recruiters. So I hadn't seen that coming. And it was a really exciting news, obviously huge news that propelled you right to the forefront of one of the major HCM leaders in this space. So with that in mind, how's that really... What's the impact of that been in, on the strength of the payroll offerings that you're giving both companies that you used to work with before as Amidis and, and UKG? And what really sparked the interest of bringing the, the, the brands together? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I guess it was it was the ultimate secret scroll project. It was uh, it was pretty quiet and hush as we worked through that process. Um, and it was about a six month process working through through the acquisition and bringing us formally into the UKG world, which which was closed on the first July twenty three. Um, so part of that, and and really the key piece of it, um, and one of the key propositions is combining fundamental pillars of the HCM suite to bring together everything you need to manage and look after people in any organization's population, and really that's that's the HR aspect. It's the workforce management aspect and it's the payroll aspect. And you know, having having been one of the people who helped drive the meters to where it is, and there was a big team of people around as well. It wasn't me by any stretch. Um, one of the really important things is where we landed and what the next stage of the journey for our organization was going to be. It really needed to be somewhere that had a respect for payroll and had payroll in their DNA. Um, and that's not every organization. And that's something having having worked, um, I've worked similar to yourself, I've worked with UKG for a long time, pre this relationship, even in other organizations. Um, they're very, very true to that journey. Um, there's a huge depth in what came from the Kronos side in workforce management, and there's a huge depth in what came from the ultimate software side and HR and payroll. And actually landing in a place that truly respects payroll, understands its importance, criticality to their customers. And that was a big part of the acquisition and putting that together in one place. That's really what led us to that outcome. So that probably looks at it from both sides. And um, it was a really, really natural fit. And it's been a fantastic fit since then. It's actually leading into exactly what we feel should have been the outcome. Um, even things like our roadmap. Our roadmap is largely unchanged in terms of strategic direction. Um, UKG saw the value in what we were already doing, but it's massively accelerated. Having the capability of the UKG organization behind us is helping us speed up what we're doing, doing it more effectively, delivering quicker to customers and getting things out to market sooner. So it's a hugely powerful synergy in that regard. Yeah, I can someone like it. It made total sense when I saw it come through, but the secret screwing you did very well because I certainly didn't see it coming. I like to have my ear to the ground on these things. For those that li are listening to this, and interestingly, the demographic of our listeners has changed actually. And I'd be interested to find out how that's changed from your side because. Not everyone listening to this in the UK may be that familiar with UKG. They might have heard of Kronos. They may not be as familiar with, with Ultimate Software. And yet now we've launched in the US as a recruiter. UKG is massive in the US. Everyone knows it. it's a very familiar name. Immediate people may or may not be familiar with, depending on whether they've been involved in the world of global payroll in the UK. But this is, this is really going to be a transformative shift. And we're going to start seeing UKG, that brand, be a much more familiar name, certainly in the UK and beyond in global payroll uh, discussions as well. Tell us a little bit more about the brand, UKG, for those not familiar, um, and a little bit more about, the, I guess, the, the, the ongoing impact now of this two major brands coming together and what that's going to mean for the mass market. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I suppose there's two, there's probably two fundamental pillars to UKG prior to Amidas coming into that mix. Um, the U side, which would be um, Ultimate Software, uh, US built um, HR, payroll, um, workforce management, and then the Kronos side, which which some of the international listeners will be familiar with, actually absolutely leading player in workforce management globally. Putting those two things into one space, it really brought together those fundamental pillars around HR, US and Canadian payroll, um, and workforce management. And then the third piece of the puzzle really was putting in global payroll for multinationals. A lot of what Amidas would have done historically would be looking at all of um, what we would term rest of world. So if, if you're using UKG or any, any other tier one HR provider, you're likely doing quite a bit of what you do in your domestic headquarters using that platform, but need to solve for rest of world um, everywhere else, wherever that might be. And in global payroll, we, we literally have no two customers who are alike. Everybody's demographic, de demographic is different. 
their sales and go to market is different. The countries they're executing in is different. So that diversity is quite broad. Um, so having capability to reach across all of that with one solution is really a fundamental pillar of it. And then we talk about a, a key concept, which is scheduled to pay, being able to go all the way from planning your workforce into shifts and rosters or any other aspect of what they do, right through to having calculated payroll and paid them, as well as statutory stuff. That's really what the, the, the merger of the organizations brings together, all of that under one umbrella. You can tell, um, I don't know why as a host of this show, but I'm, actually, I'm really excited by the acquisition. I'd be excited about this conversation because for me, it brings, as you mentioned, some pillars there, but a few fundamental things together. One is knowledge on the global payroll, where we need to try and get that brand out. We need to try and improve the knowledge of global payroll for all businesses and the awareness around that as well. But you managed to combine that now with an absolutely proven historical tech stack in UKG and, and, and HCM understanding as well, which I think is really exciting because... You know, we're looking for best in class. We're looking to raise the awareness of global payroll. A lot of people post pandemic now, we're still talking about it, have suddenly found themselves with global payroll operations where they didn't have before because we're more borderless than we've ever been before as well. So with all those things kind of in mind, what are the key factors from your perspective that really help make a payroll platform a success when you're considering what is now a mass market that's, that's global, that has no boundaries to a certain degree? Yeah, absolutely. And you're absolutely spot on, Nick. If you look back to start of lockdown, um, things definitely accelerated in terms of globalization for a lot of organizations. And I don't think that was purely a lockdown thing at all. I think borders are definitely getting more transient. They're getting lower. It's easier for people to move around globally. Um, and there's much more desire. If you look at the younger generations in the workforce, there's more desire to do that as well, that people are a lot less attached to their grassroots and will move around globally. And um, so this was coming anyway. And what I would say is it's certainly not going backwards, um, having moved past lockdown. So the ability and capability for any organization to manage that, we, we saw that explode during that period of time in terms of, existing customers adding on new countries or new, new customers going to market because the, the burden of managing global payroll had outgrown their organization or it's just becoming really, really challenging. So that growth has been, it's been really, really exciting um, and, it, and it continues. It's, it's, a, it's a very big market. It's a huge addressable market in terms of the global payroll aspect. But the challenges that we're starting to see is that if you think about some of the legislative stuff, and it's interesting, Nick, we were talking earlier on about like the UK slant on this, but the UK has actually been really progressive on some of the legislation around gender pay equality, um, around things like auto enrollment, real time information. It's really pushed to put some stuff in play that isn't actually in play in a lot of other geographies. But these things tend to follow suit. Other governments don't tend yeah. to do stuff massively innovative. They look around to see best of class of what's being done elsewhere. So those same concepts start to move across geographically. So it means that burden for any employer is, is hitting them in multiple places. So having a solution that fits across all of that and can help them with all of those things is really important. But we also look a lot at just because it's legislation in one place doesn't mean it might not be useful in another. Like the UK gender pay equity stuff is really cool in terms of what it actually does and how the calculations work. They're really precise and they're precise so the system can't be cheated and it normalizes everything in a very particular way. That's a good principle to apply anywhere. You don't have to apply it, but as an organization, you could do which is kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, the ability to cross-pollinate that knowledge, that expertise, right? It's just, why wouldn't you do that? And you've got so much expertise in, in all those different markets. It's really exciting seeing it all come together. I mean, one thing I want to ask, I know that for those interested in finding out more about Global Touchless Payroll and RPA, they can listen to the episode which we recorded two years ago. But for those that haven't done, I would, I'd argue probably it's moved on even a little bit since then anyway. Just to bring people back up to speed, can you explain what Global Touchless Payroll means? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the key thing for us with what we define as the vision for me is from the outset and what we're continuing with as what is now one view within UKG, um, it's the ability to execute everything from that source of input, whether that's scheduling people onto a roster, whether it's changing benefits, whether it's life events occurring upstream of payroll, and all of that flowing seamlessly right down to the paycheck, right down to the cash in bank for the individual. Um, and to do that, you need a huge amount of interconnected tissue in whatever the HR ecosystem is. You need to be able to pull all of that together seamlessly. You need a common language for it to operate. 
and you needed to work in just about any legislation available. So for us, that's really what it is, being able to get from source input right through to result and execution with no one actually touching it, with no human intervention, uh, no four eye check, purely tech led and doing that at a true, truly global scale. And then the other piece of that is at the same time, enabling the operator, whoever they are in a customer organization, to be able to look at all of that in any geography um, in whatever language they want, to be able to operate that in a way that works for them rather than having to learn every geography going across because that's just not scalable. It doesn't matter how good you are at payroll. Arguably, we're, we're, we're operating in 160 countries. Customers are operating in, operating in a subset of those. It doesn't matter how good you are. You're not going to be able to learn all of it and you're not going to be able to have control across all of it. So how do you enable someone to actually have that without the depth of capability? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. We have this as a recruitment challenge sometimes. We'll get clients say, I need someone that has knowledge of 100 different countries. It's like, it's not going to happen. We need to know that they know where to go or they know what, what software to leverage, but they're not going to know the legislation inside and out for 100. It's just not going to happen, right? And that's an education piece from us as recruiters, but I guess you have to do the same as a technology provider to make them understand that this is this is how we do it. It's how we use technology smartly. I know that a real you know, buzzword in, in all industries, not just payroll at the moment, is AI, right? How are we going to integrate AI? How can AI be integrated into the payroll process? I'm assuming as someone is right at the, uh, the forefront of, of tech at the moment, you'll be familiar with how you might be utilizing AI. But how can we, how, you know, how are people going to start to see AI solutions proliferate the market and, and how are they being used to boost performance? Yeah, I'd, bu I'd probably argue that virtually everyone listening is touching AI in some way on a daily basis, maybe not even realizing it. Like it's embedded in everything we do. It's in apps we use on mobile devices. And from a HR perspective, what we're likely to see is much more tailored HR experiences. And we're starting to push really hard in that direction. Um, UKG are well advanced in that. And that's something as, as one view now we're able to leverage more and more. Um, looking at that more tailored look and feel, what, what's actually presented to an employee, to a user in the system, and that being much more specific to them based on what they've done previously, based on data we know about them, based on the kind of trends, even down to clicks in what they're doing, um, and using technology to give them that tailored experience. And again, back to the kind of generational piece, that, that that's becoming expected norm for younger generations in the workforce. If it's not a tailored experience, they're likely to engage less and less. So keeping that engagement high by doing that, um, that's really a key part of where AI fits into it or gen AI. Um, I guess the other piece of it though, to, to it's not caution, but to just think about is like, it's an gen AI is an incredibly powerful tool. Um, there's, there's not a huge amount it's not capable of doing. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the right tool for every outcome. So getting the blend right, and you're absolutely right, Nick, we were talking about RPA previously. RPA still has a, a role to play in certain areas. Kind of like I, I could I could go on holiday in a spaceship. It's probably not the most cost-effective way of getting there, and it's probably not the safest way of getting there. So there's, there's that kind of aspect to AI as well, that it, it's computation. It can be expensive if not utilized in the right way, but if not utilized in certain use cases, you'll never get to a good outcome. So there's some there's some really important evolution of how it's deployed in HR coming. Yeah, I'm glad you talked about that deployment piece. So I think that links into well, it links into the contextualization of data, right? AI can do lots, but we still need that human touch to contextualize, to understand, to interrogate the data as well in the right ways, to know what trends we're looking for, to know how we want to manipulate that in the right way. When you use AI or RPA to help us manipulate on on mass and do it at speed, but actually we need that human bit to look at it. But I wonder then, with you know, you must have seen the, the the payroll careers change in response to technology changes. I know that we have as recruiters, we're seeing more payroll analysts, more payroll development type roles coming in, and and, and a huge number of different positions that we never used to recruit even even only three, four, five years ago. From your side, tech provider side, what are the kind of um, payroll positions you're now seeing evolve in the payroll space, and and how are we going to see that continually shift? What do you what kind of roles do you expect to see in the future as it continues to evolve? Yeah, it's really it's really interesting. Nick. From your from your point of view, you're seeing that on aggregate across multiple customers, and you're seeing yeah. a shift in in the, the role dynamic. Um, we had a sense that was happening a while ago, but you're obviously seeing the result and the data set that's proving it. That if you look at what the payroll role would have been, say, 20 years ago, it, it would have just been really deep, learned experience, probably some education and training courses, certifications in a single domestic payroll. 
And just the more time you spend doing it, the more you know, the more you're capable and the more you progress in your career in theory. And um, what we've certainly seen is a shift towards a broader skill set of analytical capabilities. I've, I've seen global payroll teams built in customer organizations with very few payroll people, um, like true diehard payroll individuals with yeah. really deep experience. They've definitely slanted more towards data capabilities, um, probably integration capabilities and data capabilities. Um, and that's definitely an ongoing trend. We're seeing more and more of a shift towards that. And we see that in the technology we're deploying. Actually, the more we can expose data in a meaningful way and in a way that has actionable insights in it, the more value customers are getting from it. And actually, the less they really need to know about the deep, deep weeds of a particular situation, because we're getting a lot more commoditization or productization of solutions as well. So you can pretty much take an engine for any jurisdiction and you can be comfortable that that will statutorily calculate. So the ability to really know what it's doing is becoming less and less important. The, the better testing processes get, the better test rigs around infrastructure get, the less as a payroll professional you need to really understand and know about that. Um, and the more you can actually focus on the bigger picture of what's really happening across multiple use cases, across multiple geographies. So definitely, I, I would totally agree with what you're seeing in the data, that it's a shift towards a much more tech competent um, data analytical capability is becoming the norm in the payroll environment very, very quickly. Yeah, I, it, you know, I couldn't agree more. You, you mentioned the word testing a couple of times there. So we were having more, I don't think we had any payroll testing type roles even three years ago, we were well, two and a half when we did our last podcast. We're now doing roles like uh, interrogation specialists, the people really getting into the data. So it's not just the integration piece, but it's the ability to interrogate the data to spot where there can be cost saving initiatives and other bits in there in the work as well. Testing, of course, really, really big at the moment. But also because a lot of this links to the employee experience piece, we're also seeing a lot more payroll customer success type positions come to the market as well, which are, again, not really involved in that payroll processing side of things, but very much entrenched in that user experience. And I think that link between payroll and employee engagement now, actually, that's that's stronger than it's ever been before. And maybe that's a, a part of a shift towards more of an HR mindset than it used to be very much under finance. But certainly, I'm seeing a bit of a shift the other way. Mm. Yeah, really interesting. And actually, what, what I was saying about the analytical skill set in, in payroll, I think the same holds true for HR as well. A lot of the HR skill sets um, really seeing a shift in deep, deep analytical capabilities to support comp and ban and other key key components of HR. Um, I would say that there is there is certainly a shift towards that. I think that mindset around it, um, it probably comes a little bit from... Payroll typically, and I'm not sure I want to offend anyone from this, like it's the thing that if it's not broken, don't touch it, leave it alone. You tend to get a lot of behaviors around that in payroll because it's yeah. just the thing that can't be wrong. It can't be broken. The risk or the typically the point of view is the risk of touching it or moving it is too high. But actually there's a flip side to that. It gets it gets too age, too much technical debt, and then the risk profile actually goes up the other way. Now we've got a problem, we can't sustain a system. That's really common in payroll. So definitely testing capabilities around payroll is a skill set that's becoming really critically important. And I, I suspect you'll see, Nick, there'll be a shift in the in the capabilities and the skill sets in the QA space generally, again, with AI coming in. Like it's not the answer to everything. And it's actually a lot more probabilistic than historic coding practices. They would have binary outcomes and you'd know what every outcome would be yeah. based on a use case. AI is a lot more probability based. And if you're building a certain um, a certain piece of componentry to build into a platform based on one large language module and it's, it's doing something, if you switch that module out, you'll get a completely different, or that model out, you'll get a completely different outcome or potentially a different outcome. So even the capabilities and tool sets around the infrastructure that's now part of payroll and part of HR, it's all changing. So you'll definitely see an evolution in that piece as well. Yeah, I'd agree. I, I think I would say as well that, that payroll used to be, and I've done this for 20 years, right? it used to be about getting an accurate and efficient payroll out that's compliant and on time. And that was kind of the role of payroll. But I would argue that it shifted. And this is why if you think it's not fixed, it doesn't need changing is why that's no longer that no longer stands true. And that's because actually what's made Pearl more strategic is that employee experience piece. And I work in a world of recruitment and I know that if you're not offering the most innovative payroll solution to your staff, let's say you work in hospitality and you've got you know, staff dying to be paid in real time and you can't offer that solution through your payroll, 
Well, you're going to start having attrition in that business. Employees are going to start leaving and they're going to start going to competitors. And actually, payroll's got a bigger part to play now because through the solution is what really helps engage the employees. It shows transparency in the payroll process. And we know that transparency has been a huge key behind uh, you know, the, the, the great resignation or great awakening where people wanted to see more of their data, have more access to their data. We also know that, that uh, the ability to engage your employees is around offering flexible solutions. It isn't just about pay on demand. There's a multitude of different things you can supply your staff. And actually, if you have the mindset of it's not broken, I don't need to fix it because I'm paying people on time, it's the hidden stuff you're not seeing. But people are leaving your business because it's old fashioned. People are leaving because they're not getting the solutions that they crave. And yes, you're getting people paid correctly, but actually your business is being impacted significantly through the cost of attrition and recruitment and all the things that we get involved in. And we see that from a slightly different lens. And I, I wonder if, oh, I'm assuming that's something you're seeing as well. And I would argue that that's probably the biggest reason why if it isn't broken, because it's paying people on time, that doesn't mean it doesn't need fixing. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, I I totally agree with you. It's it's really interesting how that how that has shifted. And like your point about like, accuracy, timeliness, in, in the modern environment, that's just table stakes. That's not yeah. a negotiable thing, and it's not enough. Um, like you you've probably seen some of the EU legislation. I think it was earlier. I think it's earlier this year. It's March this year that will be forcing pay transparency. So EU countries will have about three years now to implement pay transparency. Um, now, there's, there's, a, there's a balancing act, right, in all these things. You can go too far into something. So does that mean that everybody's full comp and bend package down to the cent is going to be exposed to everyone else in the business? No, it means that the typical bans for a particular job in a location need to be publicized and they need to be available. Now, it, not everyone agrees with that, but like statistically, I think about 98% of people surveyed say they wouldn't apply for a job if they didn't have an idea what it was paying anyway, and yeah. probably so. So I think that's not a massive surprise, but also the advent of a lot of exposed data and um, this kind of almost social media type effect around things like Glassdoor, where people are they're, they're publicly putting up um, anonymized data means that whether companies like this or not, whether they engage with it or not, whether it was legislated or not, this was happening. So it's it's really about kind of what I said earlier, like there's an opportunity for organizations to get ahead of this. Don't wait for it to be legislated. Start to get the preparatory stuff in place so that you're actually ready for when these things do get exposed and do get enforced. Um, so there'll be a big change with that. I think transparency pieces yeah. is, is actually really help. I think it's really, really healthy. Um, and then the other piece of that, that's that's the pay side, is, is the benefit side. You're absolutely right. People... Um, people in the workforce now, it's a much broader set of generations. And what matters to them is not one size fits all. So having the ability to tailor that down to specific cohorts in different locales, particularly for a global organization, things that you offer in the UK will make absolutely no sense in a completely different country and vice versa. So you've got to be able to, whilst the principles may apply globally of, of being equitable and being fair in what we do, how you actually execute on that. You've got to listen to the workforce. You have to understand what matters to them and what will actually have the biggest impact. And it's not always things that are financially the most impacting. No, absolutely right. That employee engagement piece. And I think it's an exciting thing because for me in the world of payroll, I think it's, it is, it's allowed it to become more strategic. It's put it more in the public eye, which is what payroll people have been fighting for for two decades since I've been in it. We want a voice. They've got one now. This is great. So you care for what you wish for. But this is where how, how it's evolving now in a really exciting way. And it's evolving quickly. And I think it's not just related to that, you know, maybe this is wrapped in employee engagement, but we've got that financial wellness piece as well now, where if you are offering more solutions, we know, and there's a huge, huge uh, media uh, interest now in the mental health of the UK workforce, but we know that mental health is severely impacted by financial health. And I think, again, it's another opportunity for payroll to get more immersed in the world of supporting employees through programs and solutions that support the financial health of their employees. And I think, you know, if we get that bit right, then we're going to see the mental health improve on the back of it. And this is where that I know just, just a few years ago, these words like employee engagement, wellness, all the, they would never have been in a conversation about payroll. So I think that's really exciting. It shows how rapidly we've moved things along. I know that UKG and Amidas, you know, and the work that you've been doing and the tech things, you, you know, you're very aware of this kind of stuff. I'd be interested to know what kind of propositions or technologies that you're working on that do support things like uh, employee engagement, uh, financial wellness, uh, talent attraction, retention, those kind of things. If you've got anything there that you can you can bring to the fore. Yeah, I, th I think that there's, there's, there's a few different dynamics to it. I think the financial wellbeing piece is, is 
fundamentally important and it, it's got a different slant now which it appropriately should have but i think actually foundationally it was always there if you go back to like maslow's hierarchy of needs i think the second 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 hierarchy level was financial ability to to contribute to food and shelter and things that matter so like that's always been recognized as a key stress point um i think some like statistically i think something like eight, eight out of ten people have a level of financial anxiety and a survey i read a couple of weeks ago um are we surprised by that no like finance is basically we live in a very financially driven world and that does matter so it definitely has a key impact um i think what actually interesting one thing is we, we're doing across the whole of ukg is making sure that we're fully utilizing our own technology um and, and that's it's important for a few reasons like number one it, it's there and we should use it and um, so for example since since the acquisition of amelis we've now deployed one view across the ukg payrolls um and it's important because it means that from a almost from a dna point of view your whole organization is touching and feeling the same experiences that your customers are getting and that feedback loop becomes way way more immediate so we're getting feedback that is coming it's coming from that customer engagement side side of things it's coming from employees directly it's coming from teams that we would often be selling into in customer organizations and having that deeper understanding of how it impacts is really is really critically important and then the other piece that we're seeing a huge amount of is is that push towards gen, gen ai components and how that influences um that more personal experience throughout the suite and that's that's where i think some really exciting things are happening and that's where it starts to become really personal down to every individual in an organization which is like it's ultimately the direction of travel in hr tech yeah and it, it, i guess that feedback loop allows you to continually improve as well right the feedback comes in we adjust we improve and we and we evolve it um and i don't know if you'd have predicted to, that we'd be where we are now if we go back to june 21 when we recorded last and you know you predicted some of these things in terms of touches payroll and an rpa and how that was going to impact the industry if i was to ask you now to predict where we'd be let's say two years because we're moving quickly so two two three years from now you know what do you think we should be expecting to to, to come into the payroll industry and and should we be excited yeah, I, I definitely think we should be excited because I think you, you made the point earlier, Nick. Like payroll, payroll, in my view, it's been underinvested for a very long time. And you know, back to the if it's not broken, don't don't do something. It also means don't apply any funds to it corporately. And um, that's definitely shifted, and it, it's it's having a big impact on what organisations, what their desires are, what they want to deploy what that will do to the employee experience so i, I think that's that's for, for me that's the first big part of it. it it's a really exciting shift for what everybody in the workforce will be exposed to in terms of technology that's available to them and um, in their day-to-day -day interaction with their employer and um, it's exciting because we get to continue to drive with leading edge technology in in basically an industry that wouldn't have had access to that previously and that that interaction between HR and payroll is becoming more and more intertwined. Um, you, you asked the question earlier, actually, I didn't answer it. Like, I'm definitely seeing a shift from like 15 years ago, payroll lived in finance. That was yeah. only percent of the time. That's where it was. Domestically now, there's more there's more HR ownership of payroll than finance. It's absolutely shifted towards HR ownership. Globally, it's still lagging. It's still typically in a global environment. Um, global payroll tends to sit under finance. And yet almost everything that feeds the payroll process isn't in finance. Finance consume the results and they may adjudicate the process, but almost every input is controlled and, and, and really driven in the HR environment. So does that make sense? Well, it's a different answer for every organization, but that's, that's a big shift as well. It means that that kind of interlinking of HR and payroll technology, workforce management as part of it, benefits intertwined, it's really becoming much, much tighter. And that's got to be good for, it's got to be good for people working in that space, getting access to more interesting stuff. Um, but it's got to be a good experience for the employee as well, having things better linked and just more visually brought to life for them. So I think there's some really exciting stuff around that. I suppose the last piece I think about is at a global scale, getting to getting to an open marketplace and um, where a customer can pick and choose what type of solution they're looking for country by country. Um, that's our direction of travel. And that's something that's actually very close now because we push so hard on the touchless piece. You have to have that to be able to unlock the next piece. And that's like that's why I'm still loving this journey. Like we started this journey a long time ago. 
And I think we're actually, you know, we're, we're on the next stage of it. And it's really continuing to drive in the same direction, which is, you know, somebody owning a product. That's really fun. Yeah, I mean, watch this space. I'll have to have you back on again in two years from now and see where see where we are. I, su I suggest it's going to be an exciting two years ahead of you, which is exciting. I think what was what I took away from that, that last response on the HR piece is this is the reminder, and I'll shout this from the rooftops for payroll people that really want to raise the profile and want to get into C-suite conversations. You've got to be collaborative. You know, Don't do it as a silo. You've got to work with HR. You've got to work with finance. You've got to collaborate with those stakeholders and bring them with you. Don't try and do it on your own because that's sometimes where the communication breaks down. It's so integrated now across all the different functions. And payroll is integrated now because it touches on so many different things. And we talked a lot about touched as payroll, but actually it touches on the employee experience in different ways. That if you collaborate, you'll really, you know, it, it will help you raise the profile of the industry and your own position if you're listening to this as a payroll manager. So I recommend that you do that. Uh, really, really interesting conversation, Richard. I'm going to open the vault. Three short, sharp questions now, and I'm really excited because these are different to the last time we uh, we opened the vault with you two years ago. Uh, first piece, uh, one piece of advice you'd give to someone working in payroll right now? I, I, I think I, I would always maintain the same. You have to keep learning. Um, and whether that's learning in your field or whether it's learning new things around you, um, Right now, I'd be encouraging I'd be encouraging anyone and everyone to start looking at AI. Um, look at how you can deploy it and what you're doing on a daily basis. It's out there. It's freely available as well as commercially available, um, and it'll have a huge impact. If you're not doing that, there's every danger you could get left behind. Um, but it also is there to make life easier. So go for it. Keep learning and maybe have a little peek at that. Yeah, fantastic. If you had the power of foresight and could change the entire payroll industry with one action or one improvement, what would that action or improvement be? It's something that probably never happened. Um, I'd love to be able to get coordination across governments to implement the same changes and actually get consistency in the compliance side of payroll, because that's the weak link in the whole global payroll process is it's just not possible to coordinate. Every government's looking for different things in yeah. different ways, different purposes. And some of it's really good. Some of it's super cool stuff that has a really impactful outcome on the economy, but then they never think collaboratively across borders. Um, I'd argue the EU is, is trying to do that, um, but that is still only the EEA affected and everyone else is doing something else. So that would be my one magic wand. I'd change that. Not the first time I've had that response. I suggest it probably won't be the last either. So you're definitely, uh, you definitely got others on side with that with that particular point. Uh, you mentioned the word super cool. So as a super cool guest on the show today, Rich, I'm going to ask you this question. If Pearl were a song or a movie, what song or movie would it be and why? Oh, wow. So I have absolutely no idea where to go with that. <laughs> uh, the one that's in my head is... Um, it's probably Die Hard, given that it's coming around Christmas time. Apparently, it's not really a Christmas movie, but I think some days in payroll can feel a little bit like that. Um, I think it it's kind of turns out okay. In the that works. That works. Well, look, I hope you. you know, thanks so much for joining me on today's show. For those that want to find out more, there will be links in the show notes to find out more about the UKG solution. Uh, you can go to ukg.co.uk or ukg.com, depending on where you are based. Uh, I will put a link to the previous episode we recorded together. It's called Global Touchless Payroll and RPA. So have a look in the show notes for that. Uh, and also there'll be a link in there as well to uh, to Richard's uh, LinkedIn profile. Um, I'm also going to put a link in there as well. This gives you a little bit more context of the acquisition piece, uh, talking about how UKG have made that groundbreaking acquisition of Amidis, which really does change the multicultural payroll solution landscape. So have a look at that if you want to find out more. It's a really interesting report. And of course, if you are a payroll leader listening to this show, whether you're in the UK, US or EMEA, and you need support with their payroll related vacancy, it doesn't have to be ops based anymore. It could be based on integration, as we discussed, customer success or, or interrogation or testing. We support all payroll vacancies at all levels across all verticals. So do get in touch with either myself or my team at jgarecruitment.com and that link will also be in the show notes just leaves me to say a huge thank you to richard limpkin for joining me today on the payroll podcast fascinating insight really really interesting conversation about global touches payroll and i'm really excited to see how this progresses i'll be watching this space with interest over the next two years so i hope you'll come back in two years time to see where we are but thank you ever so much for joining me today thanks so much for having me on really enjoyed it